The Newton Brewa is definitely a unique manual espresso maker, but is it unique in a good way or a bad way? Is this thing hideous? Is it ugly? Is it a work of art? Is it a waste of money? Why don't we take a closer look? The Newton Brewer is a manual espresso maker, meaning it's non-electric. You press the espresso manually with your own force, and you can't really say anything about the Brewer without first addressing its design. And I'm sure a lot of you are curious about what I'm personally gonna say about its design, and I'm going to tell you exactly what I think of it at the end of this video, but let's go over a couple things first. So a little bit of backstory on the Brewer. The Newton Brewer was designed in New Zealand, and they were launched on Kickstarter. And as soon as this espresso maker hit Kickstarter, it was immediately picked up by a lot of design websites like Hypebeast, Uncrate Design Boom amongst many others, picking this up and featuring it. And part of the reason is because it has a very eye-catching design. Now, whether or not that is eye-catching in a good way, or whether or not it's eye-catching in a really bad way, is very subjective. And I've seen a lot of both very strongly held opinions. And I would actually love to know what you think about it in the comments, so let me know. Is this really gross looking, or is it absolutely beautiful looking. And once again, I'll let you know what I think at the end, but let's take a quick look at the thing first. Now, there are a lot of criticisms of the Brua in terms of its design, as there is with any manual espresso maker. So I'll run you through exactly what all of those are, and I'll leave you to make up your own mind in terms of the value. First and foremost is the price. The Newton comes in at about $380 US, which translates into about $480 Canadian or $599 New Zealand dollars where this is made and that just really gets a lot of people. Like that is really expensive, especially in comparison to a machine like the Flare Pro 2, which many would say is more fully featured and comes in at about $320 US. You look at this and you think it is so simple. It's just a couple pieces of metal and wood. How on earth does it cost that much money? And to that, I would say it is a lot of money. And if you like it and you like its design, then you're gonna need to consider whether or not you actually wanna spend that amount of money. I will say to the brewer's credit, that it is extremely well made. It feels a lot tighter and a lot uh, beefier than some other manual espresso makers that I've used. You feel like you can move it around without feeling like it's gonna be flimsy and you can put a lot of weight on it and pull a great shot and not be worried in whether or not it's gonna break. One of the things I love about this design is it's got this wooden handle, but inside is a metal rod. So the wood is just a sleeve that goes over top. This is a full metal handle, so it's very solid. You're never gonna break it and it feels like a metal handle when you're using it. It's very firm. Another major criticism that people have with the Newton Brewa is that you can't fit a scale underneath while you're pulling your espresso. And to be honest, that's just not entirely true. What's probably more accurate is you can't fit the scale that a lot of people want to fit underneath. Um, and that is um, the Lunar. And you'll see when you put the Lunar in, the legs are just a little bit too narrow and the scale sits up, which of course is not gonna work very well. What does fit perfectly is a small jeweler scale. That's actually way cheaper than the Lunar on Amazon anyway. Um, these are fantastic to travel with and they can really take a beating. I've had this one for a couple years and it is so beat up and it still works great. It's maybe not as pretty as the Lunar, but you can see it fits under here perfectly. Now I would argue that the issue of the scale is not even necessarily necessarily um, an issue with fitting a scale underneath. It's actually an issue of clearance overall from basically the bottom of the portafilter to where you're gonna be placing your cup. And you'll see what I mean here. So if you have a very small um, espresso cup, like I have one right here, um, you can see it does fit under there, but there is not a lot of clearance um, for you to number one C or to fit any kind of larger cup underneath. Here's one that is slightly taller and you can see I can't actually even fit this cup underneath here. Um, so basically I'm forced to either not use a scale um, or to use a scale with a shorter cup. So that is a limitation for sure. Now the main thing from a feature standpoint that people really have a gripe about with the Brewa is that it doesn't have a pressure gauge. And that's a really divisive topic for a lot of people because some people would say, you know what, I like the way it looks with no pressure gauge. 
And some people would say, you know what? You don't even really need a pressure gauge to be able to pull great espresso. The creator of the Cafe Lot Robot is a big advocate for a pressure gauges being great for you to help get the feel of something. But then once you do, you don't really need it and you don't even really need it to get the feel. It forces you to rely on your sight, looking at the shot, your sense, the feeling of the shot under your arm and you know, it's arguable whether you even need a gauge at all. Now, a lot of you are probably gonna say, what are you talking about? You definitely need a gauge on your manual espresso maker. Otherwise, how are you gonna know if you're pressing the shot correctly? Like, are you even serious right now? And to that, I would say, if you feel like you really need a gauge, then maybe get a machine with a gauge. And if you feel like you like the design of it without a gauge and you want to have a more intimate physical experience while you're pulling your shots and you're okay to hash it out without it, you don't really need it. And if the owner of Cafe Lot says you don't need it, I'm okay with that as well. So I think that is not as black and white as most people say. Another thing that people talk about with the Brewer as a criticism is the heat retention and this giant metal group head, which, you know, it seems like it's going to just throw heat all over the place, drop the temperature of your shot and whatever. From using it a couple times, if you give this a preheat, especially if you give it two preheats, this thing gets piping hot and it stays hot for a long time. It's actually very beefy. There is a lot of thermal mass to the group head and um, it does hold the heat quite well once it's hot. But getting it hot, whether that's a deal breaker for you or not, that's up to your personal taste. Some people also don't like the fact that the porta filter is a screw in. I think that that is up to you whether or not you like that or not. It does have a nice neural texture on it to make that easier. And it's really not a huge hassle once you try it a couple times, but for some people that's an issue. Now, what are the things that I really like about the Brewer? The workflow to using it is probably one of the best workflows, um, I would say, out of all the manual espresso makers that I've tried. You know, you compare it to the Flare, which has a lot of, you know, little parts that you gotta kind of put together as you're getting ready to pull your shot. Um, you have the Cafe Lot Robot, where you gotta fill your basket with water and then try and put it on your machine and then pull your shot. The workflow to the Brewer is really a lot simpler and really you just toss your beans on here, put your water in the top, pull the lever up and push it down and you're pulled your shot. It's very simple from a workflow standpoint and in my mind that counts for a lot. I also really love the design of this water valve here as you're pulling it up and the water is going down into the brew chamber. Um, it really feels a little bit like magic. Like it's almost seems like the water shouldn't even be able to traverse that valve, but it's designed with such high tolerances and precision that it is really kind of a um, engineering work of art in the way that the valve operates. Something else that I like is how the metal bar, as I mentioned, um, goes up inside the wood handle. The wood handle is really just a sleeve, so you can really crank down on this bar if you need to with no worries of whether or not you're gonna damage the Brewer. So we've talked about some of the things that people don't like about the Brewer. We've talked about some of the things that I like about the Brewer. I'll let you know transparently what I think of the design of it, but maybe we should brew an espresso with it first, eh? All right, so the first thing with any manual espresso maker you wanna do is you wanna preheat it. So I'm gonna fill it with hot water. I got 15 grams of ground coffee. One of the neat things is the portafilter ring actually comes off and you can use it as a dosing funnel. I'll do a bit of WDT. I'm sure I'll do a video on that at some point. And a tamp. All right, we'll just pop the valve to get rid of the preheat water. All right, so this is the easy part. All I do now is I put the thing on like this, turn my scale on, put the glass in, fill up the brew chamber with water. I'm gonna use my shot mirror just so I can see what's going on under here. I'm gonna pull it up. I'm gonna push down until I see some fairly even beading on the bottom. That's called a pre-infusion. And once I have that, I'm gonna do my full press. All right, that shot looked pretty good. Let's give it a taste. That's a nice espresso. 
One of the things I love about manual espresso is if you start to see or feel channeling under the bar, you can ease up on the pressure a little bit and let that channeling heal. So it makes for a much more balanced, less channeled shot. You can adjust it in real time, really cool. Mm. Well, that was delicious, but I still haven't told you what I think about the design of the Newton. I'll be the first to say that minimalist design is not everybody's cup of tea. And if it's not, you're gonna likely find this machine basic and very unappealing, maybe even ugly. Personally, I like minimalist design, and I think that this is one of the most handsome machines that you can get, and it's a pleasure, in my opinion, to have sitting on the counter. And if you disagree, feel free to say so in the comments. Really, I find it fascinating how polar people's opinions on this thing are, so I would love to hear from you in the comments, regardless of your opinion. I will say, though, and I'm gonna give you a little lesson here on coffee equipment. If you are making coffee a hobby, you're gonna be spending more money on coffee, you're gonna be spending more money on coffee equipment. Spouse buy-in is very important for obvious reasons. You know, you want the coffee hobby to be a good thing for everybody, not just you. And if it's good for your spouse, then it's gonna be better for you. It's as simple as that. And when it comes to manual espresso makers and coffee equipment generally, there is occasionally a little bit of tension in our house around how much coffee equipment I bring into the house and how much coffee equipment I leave laying around. But I will tell you there is one piece of coffee equipment that I can leave laying wherever I want, whenever I want, and I never get a complaint. Cheers.